Good day. It's the 30th of October 2010. Ireland's economy. Now, we all know that Ireland was ruled by Britain until 1922. And during that period, it's hard to say what was good or bad. Certainly the land was the vital resource and it was monetized by taking it off the people, taking it off the people and renting it back to them or whoever could pay the rent to often absentee landlords. In the middle of that came the potato. The potato was introduced. The potato crop failed in the 1940s and the population went from 8 million down to a lot less. And by in my lifetime, the population was down to three and a half million in the 50s due to emigration and due to all that was going on and the Irish government trying to get itself back on track. Now, it would have to be said that both the Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael parties were aware of this. And the Fianna Fáil had a man called Sean Lamas, who was very, very concerned that agriculture itself would not keep Ireland going. I'm not so sure if he was correct. I still believe agriculture has a major part to play and the agricultural products and the things we produce and as a food producer of beef myself it is superior stuff and there is unbelievable activity by government to make sure it's good unbelievable testing of livestock and everything else and there is no resistance to it as such because it's done relatively fairly and I have to say maybe some other people would shoot me down the Irish Department of Agriculture is not too hard to deal with and they have people on the phone to answer to you and help you out and everything and there is public support by way of grants and uh, in incentives I only I only engage in about 40 percent of the incentives I don't get involved in some of them because they're unbelievable paperwork but I'm not giving out about that now, what way is our economy? In the 1960s, we had the oil crisis and people left. And an awful lot of my age group went abroad and some went to Australia and some went to America. And at that time, it was seen that if you went to these countries, you were gone. You're going to come back a yank. But one of the things that has come, come to pass, and I had commitments here, uh, but some of them that had farms went away and worked on uh, buildings and all of that and pubs in New York mainly and in Australia to some degree and they were great workers and they amassed loads of money with the result that when a farm was up for sale now the chap abroad can actually buy it and so we have returned Yanks who are big farmers using the money that they saved. So it's not that gone forever thing anymore. That's the fact. A lot of them even, I know them, meet them regularly. And they're here and they're farming away or they're doing some other business. And that is a model. However, it is a sad day's work that a youngster has to leave and go and work abroad to make a living. And sure, if they meet a Yankee woman over there or they meet a a, a native over there, she'll not want to come back here when she sees the rain. And it's not in our best interest. A little bit going over there for an education is good. And some of our best teachers are going over there. Now, the men who would like to be teaching primary and secondary school in Ireland are shying away. It's unbelievable stuff. You could be jailed. And we have teachers in jail. In jail. They're going to push in woke stuff, which I am fighting and trying to stand in the next election to, to fight. But who knows where that will go? We're facing an election in the United States, which could go either way. And if it goes for Harris, the teachers will all be imprisoned. That's the hard fact. Now, that is a bit of an, an exaggeration. But the, 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 the nature of this woke stuff is unbelievable. And so it's, 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 it permeates right down into Ireland. And unless we can beat it the hard way, we won't, we, there's no future. We'll see politicians running around the streets now trying to get re-elected. After them voting for the hate speech bill, which puts you in jail for offending someone for one of his genders. And he can choose any one of 72, according to Sharon Kogan. And he can, he can, he can, he can choose uh, anyone he likes. He can choose that he's a magpie. So if he knows that you, you hit a magpie with a stick, he can have you jailed. Isn't it unbelievable stuff? Unbelievable stuff. 
No, sorry, that's just a bit of the soldier song. But we're going to look at what happened. What Ireland did was it introduced a 12.5% tax for foreign national companies coming in here, such as Apple and Facebook and all of these and Google. And that was a tax haven. So Ireland was a tax haven. And they weren't even collecting it correctly. And the famous case is Apple owes the Irish government 13 billion. Now, between it all, Ireland is still awash with money when there's nearly none of it anywhere else. It's flooded with money. According to the International Monetary Fund, Ireland is the richest country in the world. It is a GDP per, per head of $145,000. It's ahead of Singapore and Switzerland. Now, when measured by gross domestic product, GDP, gross domestic product, that's the amount of goods and services Ireland produces and exports to the rest of the world. And uh, it is extremely high. But what is the real story behind it? Average income is just 45,000 euros uh, annually. When the gross domestic, the gross domestic product is $145,000. Right, nearly the same, roughly. Yet the average pay is 45,000 and that is correct. And some jobs that pay more, like policing for example, require the applicant to go wherever he's sent. So if a person, let's say from Navan, joins the Irish police force, the Gardaí, he could easily be stationed in Limerick and that has huge costs associated with it for the rest of his life. And if he retires after doing his service to retire back to Navan, he gets nothing to move his house back. He will if he's transferred during his service, but not to retire. He has to cover that cost himself. So this boom has a trickle down effect. And under EU regulations, we, are we have to bring in um, citizens of the EU here. Most of them are good workers and they're trying to uh, work for this. Like we couldn't produce our meat without um, workers, particularly Brazilians in the meat plants, the chicken plants and everything else. But a lot of our population is working for the multinationals. And how real is that money? The GNI or the gross national income is different to the gross domestic product. So according to one source, Ireland's uh, GNI is uh, about 94,000 euros. And I'd say that could be correct. That doesn't mean, of course, that it's evenly distributed. One source gives it at 98,600 US dollars, which is roughly in line. Well, the first thing that happened is that the EU forced it to bring their tax rate up to 15%. I think that's what it is. And it stuck up Apple for a bill of 13 billion. And that money has to be spent. And our government is awash with money. They're flooding it all around the place. But the simple hard fact is they can give it in relief to people and give a bit of an extra Christmas bonus. But the unfortunate fact is we cannot invest it in our own infrastructure. If this uh, bubble bursts, or this factor changes, which it could, we're left with nothing to show for all the prosperity. We have a lump of foreign money in here. We have an opportunity to use it. And we can't because we don't have the competence. And because in Cork, in Wexford, in Mayo, in Longford, in Dublin, in Dundalk, Fine Gael lads will walk up and down the street with posters. Fianna Fáil fellas will walk up and down the street. Uh, and Labour people before Profit, Greens and Sinn Féin. And if anyone asks them to discuss the issue, you don't have to get exact figures. What about the GNP and all of that? They don't have a clue. So there's no connect between Michal Martin in Dublin. No one knows if he understands this or not. Or Simon Harris or Anne Mary Lou MacDonald, as to how important this is. They cannot build anything. They've refused, despite efforts by myself and others, to comply with the basic EU uh, law, law to assess, from an engineering point of view, all government plans or programmes. The result is people like myself and others have them stuck in the courts. 
They're going the wrong way, in my opinion, building the renewable energy stuff, but they're stuck there. There's only one wind farm granted permission last year, I think, according to the, to the RTE news, and that is largely true. We have them caught because the guidelines were never assessed. But if they got away with it, they'd shove up all this junk. It's whatever they just think about. Yet they can't organise to build anything. They can't build a bicycle shed. They can't build a security hut at a reasonable cost. 336,000 euros for one and 1.4 million for the other. And the children's hospital is a mess. So if you can't build a basic hospital and you can't even get the width of the doors right for it to be effective, what hope have you? We'll end up if this collapses and it could collapse. If uh, there's a change of government in America, and if Trump wins, or even if he doesn't, remember the US government's policy towards China was founded by Trump, but Biden keeps it going. You could see attractive rates and tariffs imposed so that the multinationals in Ireland who are US based will pull out. And we have nothing to show for it. Only platitudes on radio television about climate change and climate change. We see the effect in Germany of incompetence. What effect will Germany now have on climate change? Well, it will reduce its CO2 emissions, but it'll have nothing to eat. And Ireland, the same. Now we look here at the tax rate because I'm, it's a bit juxtaposed, and I am a farmer, I might have to flee out of here very soon, and we'll continue it again. The tax rate in Ireland is 12.5. The tax rate in Great Britain is 27%. The tax rate in, Ger in Denmark is 22%. The tax rate in Germany is 29.9, effectively 30%. In the Netherlands is 25.8%. In France is 25.8%. Okay. In um, Poland is 19%. In Romania, <clears throat> it's 16.8%. Okay, so um, Finland has uh, 20%, uh, Sweden has 20.6%, and that'll do, that'll do us for now, folks. In 2015, Ireland's GDP, gross domestic product growth, increased 25.5%. None of this GDP is any much benefit to the Irish people, right? There are jobs and that available, certainly, but it's mostly withdrawn and taken and spent abroad. It's mostly spent abroad. Very little of it is actually used in Ireland. These are multinational corporations who are into all kinds of shenanigans and all kinds of gymnastics, and they don't really benefit us. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have them. I'm saying it would be better if the tax rate wasn't just as give away. And of course, the policy of all Irish governments is give away everything. So another source gives the GDP at $106,000, but the annual average income at $40,000, still basically in line. A huge down downside is the scarcity of houses. But what they won't tell you is that it's the scarcity of houses plus mass migration amounting to 170,000 people per year in 2023. So you have the problem that even if we improve house building, we have to give them all away to people who never heard of Ireland. We've actually advertised abroad to come to Ireland, get the dole, get a house and off you go. And this is why I am a candidate and hopefully God spares me my health in this constituency. Will the people back me? That's another day's work. But this belligerence and failing to acknowledge this is a severe problem for all young people coming on. Students can't get houses to stay in. It's a terrible situation because I remember over in that loan, I had a, a, a youngster going to school there and there were rows and rows of estates for them to get to sleep in and that. And now, in many parts, I can't speak for Athlone at the minute, but Athlone has a lot of migrants. These were bought up and they're gone. They're gone completely. So this is a very, very vicious anti-Irish policy. The average rent in Dublin is €2,200 a month. Property prices on rent have doubled. And then they, they printed money 
last year of nine nine percent above just money out of thin air mortgage lending in one year there were thirty thousand evictions from rental properties and other properties thirty thousand then when you go to build a house they're coming to the stage you won't be allowed to put a chimney on it you have to have heat pumps which are a fraud extra cost and they're bringing in a new planning and development bill and that is one of my areas of expertise which will fail because it can be challenged in the European Court of Justice. They're refusing to do a proper assessment on anything. They're watering down that requirement and as a result this is how the wind turbines are blocked. Now you might say to me why would you let the wind turbines go ahead? Listen if it was houses we'd soon figure it out. We'd soon get ways to push it ahead. Why are we spending all our money on that junk when we could be building houses and good houses. I remember when the uh, every town had council houses in it and there was a controversial move there to sell off houses to the occupants. Margaret Thatcher started that. I don't see a problem with that if we kept the thing on the perspective, kept the numbers great and had no extra outsiders coming here looking for our housing stock. The other problem is that international money like BlackRock and all of these are looking to invest in Ireland. <clears throat> they see a sight. They buy the site, they develop houses on it and they lease them to the people or let them to the red tenants so that those tenants will never own their houses and when they pay their rent, they're paying for the pensions of people in Canada, in America and everywhere else. That is how our Irish government gives away everything we have. You go down to uh, parts of the country and Virginia is one of them in County Cavan, Mola and those areas where it's full of Dublin people and they're very good. They were driven out of their own uh, working class areas of Dublin by this very policy. And they're going to go now and vote for Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael the ver and Sinn Féin, the very people who did it. One statistic I get here is that 58% of all new homes built in the Greater Dublin were bought, by developed, or bought or developed by investor funds. 58% of new homes built in the Greater Dublin were bought and developed by investor funds. And this is in a government where there are TDs, not in government, uh, people before profit, Richard Boyle Barrett, all Catherton, all this one, and Catherton Martin, and the Green Party are in power, and that's the result. And the people of Dublin Bay South will vote for them again. <clears throat> Because Ryan is gone, but they'll put up somebody else. That's the problem we have. They're going to keep voting. Now, I'll read that to you again. 58% of all newly built homes in the Greater Dublin were bought and developed by investor funds recently. And our government has the cheek to go before the people. And here in Cavan Monaghan, where it's not just as bad, but it's getting that way. And up in Mead and over in Loud, they'll go into the polling booth and vote for the very politicians who have given 58% of our housing to investor funds. So to finish now, I have somebody coming to do a wee job for me. And uh, the bottom line is, folks, we have a, we're awash with money. The place is flooded with money. And all that's worrying them is putting up stupid windmills out on the sea and building anywhere they can out junk, pylons, uh, out electricity nonsense. When they're using 56,000, sorry, 56 articulated lorry loads of diesel a day to run the emergency power. And I have a text on my mobile phone to warn me of power cuts and that vulnerable people must let them know where they are. That's the reality. And in Cavan Monaghan constituency, we will have Brendan Smith, who has presided over this. Neve Smith of Fianna Fáil, getting all out and ready. We'll do the houses. We'll do the work on the door. Ask her, why is 58% of our housing being taken up by investment funds? What do they care about us? As Heather Humphreys pulled out, there'll be new Fine Gael. Pauline Tully, has she opened her mouth about it? Does she even know about it? What about Matt Carty? Does she even know about it? I would block the migration immediately. Stop pandering to all these people that we don't even know who they are. 
and try to tell us they're refugees. From what? Refugees from countries that run their economy right. And coming here to a country that gives everything away to them while our own people can go to hell. Folks, I'll be doing more on this because I'm going to have to educate myself big time for the election coming up. Whether our people will listen to this, that is the problem. Can we really get people to listen to this? Or are they just stuck in their ways and it's only when the whole thing collapses around their ears and a lot of these companies pull out, then we're left that the only thing the foreign companies will have in Ireland is our housing stock. They thought they'd have our water services, they have our electricity services and they're grabbing everything while the going is good and we we'll not get them out too easily. Folks, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Comment clearly underneath and we'll see you back soon. Thank you.